In this tutorial, we're going to be creating this procedural wood material in Blender. Now, if you'd like to help support the channel and also purchase the project files for this tutorial, then you can do that over on my Gumroad store and also my Patreons over on my Patreon page will be getting the project files. So links in the description if you'd like to check that out. So here's the procedural setup that we're going to be creating. As you can see, it's actually not that complicated, but it has a great result. Now, real quick before we continue, I want to thank this video's sponsor, Sketchfab. On Sketchfab's 3D model store, you can purchase models and assets. My favorite feature of Sketchfab is that you can upload and preview your own 3D models in your browser. You can even view your 3D models on a phone or tablet. You can also apply to become a seller on the platform. Check out Sketchfab with the link in the description. All right, so I just wanted to show you the setup that I have before we start the tutorial. So I just added an icosphere and then I added the subdivision surface modifier on it so that it's very smooth. And then I also shaded it smooth. And then I also added a camera and I pointed the camera right at the sphere. And then I am using the cycles render engine. So I just added this plane right here and then I added an emission material for our light. If you're using the EV render engine, you could also just press shift A and just add a regular area light and then also to get some very realistic lighting in the world right here I added this empty warehouse 01 1k HDR and this is from polyhaven.com so I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to use the same HDRI that I'm using so right here on the world I just clicked on the color right here and changed it to environment texture and then I opened up the HDRI and then I'm also going to be using the node wrangler add-on to preview our shader nodes so if you don't have that enabled you can click on edit and then click on the preferences and then right over here on the add-ons, you're just going to type in node right here on the search and you can see that there's this node wrangler add-on. So just check mark that add-on and I will show you how to use it in the tutorial. All right, we can just close the user preferences. All right, so I have the shader editor pulled up right here. So I'm just going to click on new to add a new material and we can just call this procedural wood. All right, so I'm going to press shift day and I'm going to start off by adding a Veroni texture. We're just going to drop it down here and then I can use the feature from the node wrangler by holding down the control and shift key and clicking on the node. That's going to add the viewer node and it's going to preview the Veroni texture. Now the scale right here, I'm going to turn this up to a six so that it has a little bit more detail. And then also using another feature from the node wrangler, I'm going to with the Veroni texture selected, press control T and that's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping and then I want to use the object mapping so I'm going to place the object into the mapping and that way it'll just place the Veroni texture around the object more evenly. All right so this really doesn't look anything like wood and so what I want to do is actually add another texture in here through the vector to distort the Veroni texture because the vector right here this is telling the texture how it's going to be placed on the object so I can press shift a and I can search for a noise texture and I'm just going to drop the noise texture right in here and that way the noise texture is going to affect the vector and so it's going to distort the Veroni texture and then also something that's very important make sure you plug the factor into the vector because later on when we work with the colors that is really going to affect what it looks like all right so on the noise texture I'm going to change the scale to 2 and then the detail I'm going to turn that all the way up to 16 so it's very detailed then on the roughness here I'm going to change this to 0.8 so it has even more detail. And then the distortion here, I'm gonna turn this up to four, and the distortion really helps to make it look like the grain of wood. Now this is a pretty good black and white texture of the grains of wood, but it isn't very stretched, and with wood, usually the grains of wood look a bit stretched. So to stretch it, I'm gonna use the mapping right here to do that. So right down here on the scale, the Y value of the scale, I'm gonna turn this up to like a 10, and you can see now that looks a lot like wood. You can see that nice texture there, it's all being stretched, and it looks a lot like wood. So now we can go ahead and add the colors that we want for the wood. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a color ramp and I'll just drop the color ramp right in here. And then we can make all the different colors that we want. So first I'm going to drag the black tab out and then also this white tab, I'm going to drag this out as well. I'm just going to drag it out to about here and then on the color of the white, I don't want it to be white, I'm going to make it a dark brown color. And if you want to use the same dark brown color that I'm using, I'm going to be using a hex value of 70. 
4024. So you can punch that in if you want to use the exact same color that I'm using. Then I will click on the plus here to make a new one. I'm going to drag this one over here. And then this one, I'm going to change it to a very light brown. And again, if you want to use the same hex value that I'm using for the light brown, the hex value is BF. 915B. Then I'm going to click on the plus here to add another one. I'm going to drag this one over pretty close to the light brown one. And this one I'm going to make very, very light brown. So it's going to be almost a pure white, but it is going to be going a little bit towards the orange colors. And again, the hex value that I'm using is FFE4CF. So now you can see that really is starting to look like wood. It has some parts that are darker and some parts that are lighter. And then here and there, it also has some little white patches. All right, so now we can plug the color into the base color, and then I can control shift and click on the principle to preview it. All right, so that is it for the color, but I also want to give it some roughness and I also want to give it some bump. So first, let's just take the color and put that into the roughness value. Now I'm going to press shift A and search for another color ramp because I want to control how shiny it is because you can see this looks like a super polished wood. And if you want that, you could leave it like that. I do want it to be a shiny wood, but not quite that shiny. So this black tab right here, I'm going to turn it up and you can see when I make it more and more light colored, it's going to be more and more rough. So this is a very rough wood, but then if I turn it down, it's very bright. So I'm just going to change it to something about in the middle, kind of just a gray color in the middle. I think that looks pretty good. All right, so now we want this to affect the normal. So what we can do is we can take the distance and just plug that into the normal. And then I'm going to press shift A and just search for a bump node because we need to convert this to a normal data because this is a gray value. So we want to plug the distance into the height and then the normal into the normal. Now that kind of works, but if I control shift and click on this, you can see that this value right here, this distance value on the Verona texture it has so much detail that when you zoom in here you can see it's super super rough and even with the strength turned up to one you can see it's not popping out that much it's almost like there's too much detail and if I control shift and click on this you can see it's very very fine detail and it kind of gets rid of our shininess as well because it's so rough so what I want to do is use this same texture but not have as much detail so to do that I'm going to click on the Veroni and then shift click on the noise texture I'll press shifty to duplicate them and drop them down here and then I also want to plug the vector of the mapping right here up to the vector of the noise texture so now the Veroni texture right here and the Veroni texture right here are exactly the same but now we can just turn down the amount of detail so right here on the noise texture the roughness value I'm going to turn this down to like a 0.4 and now if I zoom way in you can see that's way less detailed you can see how much detail there is right there and if I control shift and click on this you can see that has tons more detail whereas this has a lot less so now I'm going to use that for our bump instead of the super detailed one. So I'm just going to take the distance, plug that into the height of the bump, and then I can control shift and click on this. And you can see now that normal, that bump there is popping out a lot more. And you can see it's actually really, really strong. So if I control shift and click on this, you can see that's like bumping out a lot and that's almost too much. So I'm going to turn the strength value right here down to like a 0.1. So you can see now if I zoom in, you can really see those grains of wood. They're kind of popping out. But if you use this distance, it has too much detail so it's really really small but this distance it has less detail and you can see that those grains of wood really pop out so that looks a lot better and of course you can change the strength so if you want to make it bump out a bit more you can I'm just gonna set it to point one I think that looks pretty good all right and that is it that is the procedural wood texture so I'm just gonna render this out and we'll take a look all right, there we go. So that is it. That is the procedural wood material. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was helpful and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to help support this channel, a great way to do that is by purchasing the project files over on my Gumroad store. And you can also check out my Patreon where I have all the project files as well as some other things like 3D models and assets, tutorial files, artwork project files, and other procedural materials, things like that over on my Gumroad and Patreon. And if you'd like to help support the channel monthly, here on YouTube I have the YouTube memberships so you can see right down there there's that join button next to the subscribe button so if you join my memberships here on YouTube then you'll be supporting the channel each month and you'll also get some cool perks here on YouTube but with that said thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in a future video